Why, good evening, everybody. My name is Cameron, and welcome to the couch, which is being used as a bar today. Uh, in case anybody hasn't heard in the past couple of weeks, I've been doing well, actually, and excited to see Dom as well, who's staying up. I think he's still kind of sick over there, so I hope he's doing a little bit better. But uh, Anna and I are moving out soon. And so, as a part of the, not soon enough, honestly, the uh, a part of the moving out process is naturally being able to take all of your belongings from one location and moving it to another. And Dom's no longer sick! Else. This is great! Anna made a Spongebob joke, which she doesn't usually do. It's the one with the Alaskan bullworm where they take Push the Push it seat. somewhere else! That's the one. But so, um, the, the, um, the area that we previously known as being the bar is kind of in shambles right now. There's boxes there, there's a pile of clothes, there's things that have kind of fallen. I can still see my television though, which is actually quite nice. Um, there used to be a dresser type thing behind me. This is where we kept all the board games, but if you, if you can't already tell, board games are just kind of hanging over there. Um, but so, yeah. So for a little while, work with us for a little bit. For the next like month or so, the angle, the, the angles are gonna be probably a little weird. The desk is probably gonna look less weird, like in terms of how long it looks weird, but the bar, there's no space for a bar right now. Uh, but I still got my little table. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep with this little table over here. Honestly, it's, I feel like this is actually a little more comfortable. It feels a little more personal, a little more intimate. I'm actually sitting crisscross applesauce on my couch right now. It's great. I've got all my pillows around me. I can cuddle with my pillows. It's great. I love these things. It's wonderful. Um, and honestly, it's just a different kind of vibe. Uh, but no vibe is bad a vibe for cocktail vibe? Vibe, vibe, cocktail vibe? I'm not really sure exactly. Dom's saying, he thinks he said it before, but if you have a moving truck coming more, coming, coming more, I can't speak. Oh my God. Mormon missionaries are totally cool with helping you move for free. Applesauce drink, do you say? Applesauce drink? I don't think I said applesauce drink. Did I say applesauce drink? I didn't mean to say applesauce drink. I don't have applesauce to be putting in a drink. Actually, no, we do have applesauce. I don't plan on drinking it. I wonder, you could probably make like an applesauce like syrup type thing. But I think what we're probably gonna do, the moving process will most likely be taking all of our small belongings and moving them in piece by piece. We have like a month to move things over from this apartment to the next one, which kind of made rentals insurance really, really confusing. And also electricity and also internet because there's now a one month period of time where we pay for two internets and two renters insurances and two electricities, which is not super duper bad. It was just a little bit of a comp, it was a little complex to, to set up. I actually got the renters insurance yesterday and the people on the phone were like, you know, you can just change your address, right? And I was like, I know, I know, but like there will be belongings in two separate places. And they were like, oh, okay. Well, there's probably a thir or 30 day grace period. I was like, okay, well let's, let's do the change of address then. And then they later told me that technically if you do a change of address, that 30 day grace period means that the previous place, the one I'm in right now is only 10% covered, which means, I don't know. I think it's supposed to be 10% of a particular dollar amount, but that made me think that if somebody takes my computer, for example, then I would only be entitled to being reimbursed for whatever 10% of that is, which is probably two Ram sticks. If I had to be perfectly honest, um, not that close together. I was goofing. Oh, goofing. Applesauce to drink. Well, I could drink applesauce if I wanted to. I'd have to get up and get it though. You know, speaking of weird things to drink, that actually makes, that actually reminds me of this viral trend that I've been seeing where people take balsamic vinegar and they combine it with sparkling water. And it's supposed to be like a healthy Coca-Cola alternative. And I was planning on doing that last week but as it turns out, I wasn't, I didn't have any balsamic vinegar, but I do have some today. And I guess before we get into the cocktail, because I'm going to forget about this if I don't do this now. So I'm actually going to pull out the balsamic vinegar and sparkling water and see whether or not this actually tastes good, which I have a feeling that it might, it might actually not. I just, I don't, I don't know, but I'm curious to find out. And I actually completely forgot that I was doing this for me very quickly go behind the camera. I'm going to grab myself a glass to put it in. Let's do, let's do this one. I like this one. I don't have a lot of feet space either. So if I, I'm, I'm going slowly because I want to be able to not knock things over because I have glassware around here naturally. Um, let's see, the balsamic vinegar that we have today is a, a balsamic vinegar of Medina, uh, Madhava, clean and simple, simple and clean is the way that you're making me feel tonight. Um, I think I can just unscrew it, so. Love thyself, that sounds gross. Sir, please. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. And is this, oh, I'm supposed to, gotta peel off the top thing before you, there we go, there we go, now that worked. And I bet, can I take the shell off? 
shell is not coming up. Sir, you have gotten my mom's interest. Sir, why? I want to know what this tastes like. This, these, I don't remember whether there was any particular ratio to this, but all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of balsamic vinegar into a glass. Just a little bit. Just enough to get it all nice. I don't know if that was a little bit. Balsamic vinegar. Actually, I really like the taste of balsamic vinegar, especially on a salad. And so now I'm just going to kind of add sparkling water until this tastes like Coca-Cola. If it ever is supposed to taste like Coca-Cola, I do not know. Uh, today's choice of sparkling water is Le Croix, specifically Raz Cranberry Naturally Essence Sparkling Water. That ain't no salad. It's not. That is, very, that is way more than a little bit. Well, I guess I'm going to have to add a lot of Le Croix to be able to delightfully eat things. Um, Le Croix is made with only carbonated water and is naturally essenced. Essenced with a an asterisk, um, and it says next to the asterisk, non-GMO. But that still doesn't tell me what it means by naturally essenced, and I am curious, but not curious enough to go out of my way to try to make a stink about it. So, Le Croix and balsamic vinegar. All right, I've poured in a little over half. Let's see how that tastes. Still smells like balsamic vinegar. All right, that was really sour so far. I think I need more. That's got a, that's got an interesting like spice to it. It's almost kind of spicy. Still smells like balsamic vinegar. Asterix was stronger than, than any LaCroix flavor, flavor. I know, right? Honestly, I want to know what they mean by essence. I'm guessing they mean like natural essence or maybe like, like, um, what do they call them? It's, uh, like, uh, oils. It's the, uh, essential oils, maybe? Because essential? Essence? Maybe they use essential oil in these. I don't know. Alright. After pouring a little bit more in there, it also does not taste like Coca-Cola. Let's try some more. Even more, I'd say. It still smells a little sour. I will say... The top thing here is that it tastes sour. Coca-Cola doesn't taste sour. Not in my opinion, at least. This is not... This is sweet. I will say that it's... Honestly, it's not that bad. To whoever says that this tastes like Coca-Cola, at least with Raz Cranberry LaCroix, it does not taste like Coca-Cola. I would say this is nowhere near what I would consider Coca-Cola to taste like. This tastes more similar to, like, lemonade than it does to coca-cola because the balsamic vinegar is has a sourness to it that is not completely unpleasant it almost tastes like there's lemon juice in here but i know there's no lemon juice in here unless actually don't tell my mother this oh i will not be mentioning anything unless she asks and if she asks i will say i will say anything Okay, I don't think you can add more TV static to make it taste like Coke. No, I don't think you can. There is no more TV static brand LaCroix. Zero sodium equals innocent. You are not, you're not, you're not innocent. There is nothing innocent about you. You may be pure, but not innocent. She's listening. Well, mother who's listening. It's kind of sour and it tastes like it may have lemon juice, but apparently this is organic wine vinegar and organic concentrated grape must. You know, you know, now that it says grape, I think this actually does kind of taste like sparkling grape juice. Cami B, b, -b, 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 -b from Hey Hey I, Hey Hey I, aka Hilton Head Island, is the island that my family goes to hang out on so on our family vacation. Week one is occurring right now, and I will be joining them for week two. I forgot to mention, I will not be in my humble abode next week. I am still anticipating on streaming. I'm gonna take my equipment down with me and maybe we'll get some nice like tropical views of the hotel pond. It should be nice. It should be very good. Cursed ramen -ay. It is kind of cursed ramen -ay. All right, so like the more that I drink of this balsamic vinegar and sparkling water, the more, the more like into it I'm getting, it still doesn't taste like Coca-Cola. Nothing about this is Coca-Cola to me. However, it is a different drink than I thought it was going to be, and it's not entirely unpleasant. Honestly, so this is not super far out from me because my mother is the kind of person who enjoys drink, maybe not 
not enjoys drinking, but says that drinking apple cider vinegar is a way to make you a very, very healthy person. And I've literally never been able to stomach any sort of drinking any sort of vinegar. But this is stomachable. Now, no, 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 no. I know we have all these comments about TV static and whatnot, but, but, this is probably going to do, I don't know if this is going to do wonders for my esophagus or perhaps destroy it even more because acidic things tend to activate my reflux, which tends to erode my esophagus. And I would think whatever is healthy about this is nullified by the amount of acid that is in vinegar. And maybe this is eroding my vocal cords. I don't know. I will, I'm going to add more. Maybe it's better now. So apple cider vinegar and apple is apple LaCroix, quote unquote, apple essence. It's all about the essence. And if there is an apple LaCroix flavor out there, maybe I can make balsamic apple vinegar by adding the apple flavored LaCroix to the, apple, the balsamic vinegar. All right, now it's just kind of starting to taste like LaCroix. It tastes like the essence of raspberry and raspberry. What was this? Ras cranberry, raspberry cranberry, crasberry. Yeah, kind of tastes like crasberry. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm done with that. That's not that. That's it's not incredibly unpleasant. It's not the worst thing I've ever had, but I think we can do better. I think we can do much better by making an actual cocktail. The static is winning. The static is winning. The static will eventually. I mean, I suppose if you take the proportions of balsamic vinegar and eventually fill it all the way up with the TV static La Croix trademark, then you will eventually have a winner, and the winner will always be the La Croix because balsamic vinegar isn't sparkling. It's got nothing. It's got nothing jazzy and spicy about it. Um, sparkling water though, jazzy, spicy, sparkly. It's water, but it's with all the pizzazz that you could ever want. It's basically, it's all the color of Coca-Cola plus all the sparkle of Coca-Cola without any of the taste or satisfaction of Coca-Cola. So um, I guess if anybody needs to drink vinegar, you could probably mix it with sparkling water and it would be pretty good. I honestly, maybe that would, maybe the apple cider vinegar plus some Topo Chico would go really, really, well for people who need to consume apple cider vinegar which <laughs> supposedly i'm supposed to be doing <laughs> excuse me very bubbly static shock is the only type that matters and what flavor would static shock be lemon laser lemon flavored Lacroix. in any case nobody came here for a weird coca-cola ripoff people came here for cocktails at least i came here for a cocktail it has been a pretty good week so far um very productive at work but we don't need to talk about that. Where is Elmo saying balsamic, balsamic vinegar? Elmo says balsamic vinegar. I don't know. It's difficult for him to say, you know. Ba balsamic vinegar. I don't know about that. I tried it. I tried it. If there was anything bad about that, then whoops. I've been canceled. Berry mix, maybe? Berry lemonade? Berry lemonade. Maybe. That could work. I wonder if I added lemon juice to that. There is lemon juice in this cocktail. I could add to that. We might revisit that later. If I remember, we might revisit it. Today's cocktail is one called Ocean Mist. I'm pulling it from my handcrafted book. It's not my book. It's an illustrated cocktail book by Caroline Boyk Perdue. It's wonderfully, wonderfully illustrated. Today's the Ocean Mist. It's got a little mermaid on the front and it uses tequila and apricot brandy, which I just recently picked up apricot brandy the other day and was really excited to use it in something. And so I saw that mixed with tequila and I was like, yo, I usually don't drink tequila, so this is going to be an interesting combo. Go, quote, that's a big word for Elmo. It is a big, a big word. Ah, it's a big word. Balsamic vinegar. That is a large word. I mean, but balsamic is two words. A larger word for Elmo would be supercalifragilistic expialidocious. So come on, let's drink some supercalifragilistic expialidocious, which is what I call that concoction over there because there is no other single word that I can even fathom to describe what it tastes like all on its own. I call it... I call the sparkling water plus balsamic vinegar concoction a super cal. I'm calling it super cal. It's super low on cal, and it's also short for the fragilistic galagidabidobidibo. Girl's going wild. Absolutely. Going absolutely wild. So, the first thing that we're going to need in our cocktail shaker is a cocktail shaker. So, let's get a cocktail shaker. Let's do that thing we do where we throw it around and catch it. Because it looks cool. It's the other way. I don't know why I do that. It's fun to do. It's fun to do things that you can do, you know? 
it's really fun. Um, so the first thing we're gonna need is about two ounces, or gotta grab my measuring majinger, two ounces or about 60 milliliters of tequila. The only white tequila that I have in my collection is Bribon. And um, we're actually kind of running run a little low. I've been using a lot of tequila recently, or I might have actually brought it over to a friend's house and that's where most of it went. I don't remember. It's actually kind of cool. There's a little like, there's like a, like a, like a cowboy or something back there. In the back of the glass. I don't know if you can see that, but super Cal, because California's curse upon us all. All the Californians be like, yo, do this. It's good for you. Don't you want to drink vinegar? And all of us like, no, no, I don't. But we're going to do it anyway, because that's what the internet tells us to do. And if the internet tells us that it's healthy to do, then somebody out there is going to try it. By the way, the internet once told me, young influential boy of age 14 once upon a time that um putting salt on your body and then ice on it is a really good idea and it will help your acne it will not it will give you really really bad burns so don't do that also don't take your fist in this position and whip it forward or else you'll probably snap the tendon that's in here another thing yet that the internet decided to tell me to do as a young boy and i almost fell for but no, 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 no. Dom says, do you collect your bottles or do you just throw them away when they're done? If I know that I'm going to need the bottles, I will keep them around, uh, especially if they're a cool bottle. Usually what I'll wind up doing is the, the, the bottles that I have that are like kind of more clear and regularly shaped, not necessarily something like this, something that I know that I can put a little uh, quick pour in. I will usually use those for my syrups and stuff. And for a while, I didn't kept keep the bottles a lot because I didn't have that many syrups, but I'm finding myself more and more making syrups. And as I become more familiar with the recipes, it's a lot easier for me to recall how to make a syrup, make the syrup. It literally takes a couple of minutes or some of the liqueurs that I've been making as well. And I say liqueurs, but there's really only been one and it's Nochino. And I did finish the Nochino the other day and it's currently in its last stage of Technically, you put it in the bottle, you bottle it up, and then you let it sit for another 30 days, and then it's ready to drink, but I did try it, and it's great. That will, the Nochino will be making a return, hopefully in a, in a couple months or so, because it is actually super, super tasty. It's like, it's like, oh, I can't recall right now, I would not be able to do it justice, but it's cinnamony, it's vanilla-y, it's, it's, it's herbal, it's, it's almost, it's almost bitter in a way, but it's, it's a good kind of bitter, and it's, oh, so good. I also had this really cool blue wine bottle that I've been wanting to put simple syrup in because technically because it's blue, it blocks out a lot of the light. And so that would protect the syrup from going bad or, or going weird because of the UV rays on it sooner. Or brown bottles. Brown bottles are really good for that, which I do use to put um, some of my syrups in. It's not really conducive in this apartment because where I keep all of my bottles are up on my shelves up there and there's nothing really stopping them from getting light on them. There's not much that I can do about that. I don't have enough counter space to keep them in. Um, but hopefully we'll figure out that problem in the new apartment, which woo, it's happening soon. Real, real soon. It's only like two blocks away too. Every, every single time I told somebody like uh, because I needed to turn on the, the, the new electric or the new internet and whatnot, they're like, oh, where are you going? You're going far away? I'm like, no, I'm just... Just move into a bigger apartment. I like like bigger apartments. I want to go to a place that's that's much bigger than it was previously because this place is very small. Literally everything about this apartment has been like like smooshed together just so that it works. The only reason that things are even set up in those proportions because this was pretty much one of the only ways that we could fit everything into one place. Like the fact that all of the board games are on the table showed us how important that set of shelves were otherwise we would just we would have any place to put the board games aside from the closet which is already pretty much filled to the brim with clothes and whatnot but the next apartment has significantly more closet space like so much more closet space and i feel like that is just going to be that itself is going to be completely worth the move more on that in about a month it will definitely a month or so because by the time that the next 30 days is over all of the belongings will be in the new apartment and probably the new setup will be there too. We'll see. Patience, everyone. We appreciate it around here. The next ingredient that we're going to need in our cocktail shaker is a third, three quarters of an ounce of apricot brandy, which if I'm doing my math right is about 22 milliliters. Um, I think I'm right there. And so I actually picked up some apricot brandy from the store the other day. I was, I went there and I needed to pick up more gin. And so as I, as I was getting more gin, I was like, what's a flavor that I don't need to have in my collection? And apricot brandy seems to come up like a lot. Shockingly, apricot flavored brandy comes up a lot in these cocktails, in um, mostly the black, the little black cocktail book. I don't know why. It's a, apricot's a thing. I tasted this off screen, uh, like when I first got it. And I wouldn't say it tastes like apricot. It just kind of tastes like, like, 
somebody assigned a fruit flavor that wasn't similar to like cherry or orange or apple or pear or anything like that um, and said that's apricot um, and it also tastes mostly like hand sanitizer or, and it smells like hand sanitizer too but then again like that's kind of I don't know I've never been a big fan of Joaquin's flavored liqueurs um, but that's what I got and that's what we're going with also the the, the apricots on this cover look uh, rather rather peachy I don't know if that's coming across very well but uh I try. I try my best this year. Three quarters of an ounce, or just about 22 milliliters, into your cocktail shaker. Note that there's no ice in here yet. That's the plan. We have to add. I'm, I'm going back to the trial of the egg white again. I did not do very well last week, but I'm going to try again this week. Let's fill that up to about three quarters of an ounce. There we go. Or about 22 milliliters. It's got an interesting orange hue to it. I have a feeling sometimes when these cocktail books are, are produced, they purposely leave out or purposely add in like uh, uh, particular brands that you would choose to use. And sometimes when they don't specify what the brand is, it kind of gets like the point of the drink kind of gets lost in translation. And what I mean by that is, so like if you were trying to make a drink with creme de menthe in it, for example, creme de menthe will come in either a clear uh, flavor, clear flavor clear color or like a, a green color and oftentimes if you see a drink that looks like it's supposed to be green you will have to like kind of infer that oh i probably have to use the green creme de menthe or else it's not going to look correct but a lot of cocktail books just leave out what the color is or they leave out what the brand is like i don't know if all apricot brandies out there have this orange color but i think because of the color that i think this drink is going to be which is kind of like a seafoam green almost bluish type thing that you need to have some sort of orange in there because the other part that gives you blue is this curacao that'll be coming up soon and without it you're not really going to get that same like seafoamy green color um, but nothing in this book says that you have to use Joaquin's apricot brandy. But if there's another apricot brandy out there that has the same, like, color, then you may kind of figure that out on your own. But I guess there's a little bit of context that is not exactly portrayed in the book. And I don't exactly know why that is. I don't know why, like, you can't say, like... I don't know, rather, if it's a you can't say it or you just don't say. Like, uh, you kind of... You say, like, um... I don't know. Like... You could say, we recommend using Joaquin's, or we recommend using a green one, as opposed to, honestly, I don't really know. Different different strokes, different folks. Folks do the strokes and whatnot. And hopefully everybody's okay after the strokes that they do. Not like the ones in golf. Medical issues are bad. The next thing that we're gonna need is three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. So I'm gonna kind of put things to the side. I don't know why I have my mouse up here and grab my apparatuses for doing lemons. You may have noticed that um, this, this table, not as wobbly as it was previously because it's not stacked up on top of a box. It's actually on the floor. I am very close to ground level here. I'm not, I'm not standing. If I stand, it looks like this. That's what standing looks like from this angle. Seafoam green associated with mermaids can raise a concern for the little mermaid. Uh, yes, yes indeed. Because at the end of the little mermaid, seafoam green, she dies. She becomes seafoam. Isn't that crazy? That's not how the Disney one went. Not at all. Domstar says, I usually use rope with my strokes. Imp face, imp face, imp face. The internet hates you, why is that? Because every time I look up, like, dances for, you'll be in my heart for, like, Disney. What Everyone does, do? does a freaking waltz. It Everyone is not a waltz. a waltz. It's not a waltz, it's a four song, but you can make it slow enough to do a waltz if you want. I make it a waltz. I thought you said the internet hated you because the, the speed was getting slower because oh, it no. is. The speed's dropped a little bit. Just being rude. Comcast came by and supposedly fixed my router the other day. Something about input signal ingress. I, I feel like that's a made-up term, but I don't really know. Um, oh, you're going to make me buy lemonade? I'm not making lemonade for you. <laughs> Why not? Because I'm doing a streamy thing oh, here. Oh, my God. Don't, don't hand me sugar. Do not hand me sugar. I'm not doing all this lemon juice for you. What are you doing? You, you only need half the lemon, right? I only need... I have three lemons in here. I could definitely put lemon juice in the container for you, and you can make the rest of it. Yeah, that's, that's the solution. Here. Sounds good to me. That's what we'll do. Get in my cup for lemonade. Juice. Do I have to pour your lemon juice first? No, you can do it later. I'll come back for it later. All right, she'll come back for it later. We're also going to make some lemonade. Give Anna sugar. Anna needs the sugar. Oh, I can get the sugar. Oh, no, no. That's fine. You can you can do your own sugar. Sugar. Do, 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 do. Ooh, honey, honey. Anyway, three quarters of an ounce. That's what I said, right? That's what I said. Three quarters of an ounce of fresh squeezed lemon juice. It's tough to do. I don't want to like kill myself. I literally like when I attempt to exert my arms, they shake. I'm not a very strong person to be honest. That's a better angle. 
Three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. Come on, squeeze it. Come on, dude. Come on, you got it. A little bit more. A little bit more there. You got it, dude. You got it. I squeezed it all through the bottom, but um, they got it. They really did. I told them that they got it, and they got it. They did. They did. They did. They did. Three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice into your cocktail shaker. And if you have a fiance who wants lemonade, you can do even more ounces into a cup of your choice. Cam, she needs your sugar. I thought honey was last time in Hollow Knight. There was honey in Hollow Knight last time. We were in um, we were in a hive. Bees in a hive. Bees make honey. I, I also make honey. Honey is good. Honey, sugar, sexual innuendo. I didn't say that correctly. Sexual suggestive humor. Yeah. All right, let's move this sticky tray out of the way. I'm gonna put lemon juice in it. I'm gonna put lemon juice in a container. Lemon juice, not much sugar in lemons, but there is sugar nonetheless. Oh goodness, I'm juicing off the side. I don't have the same like leverage that I normally do when standing. Oh, also that's kind of cockeyed now. All right, come on, come on, other way, other way. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for cooperating. Cooperating. We appreciate that. Squeeze the other direction. No, you squeeze the wrong way. It's like, it's oblong. It's not squeezing correctly. Let me gotta do it like this. A little bit by hand. Just a little, just a little bit of by hand. There we go. Come on, get in there. Don't squish your finger, Cameron. Oh my god, that was a slight mess. It happens sometimes around here. Juicy, juicy, juicy. All right, well, I tried my best with that lemon, so that's all we're gonna get for that one. Alrighty then, put that to the side. Is that sweet lemon or tart lemon? Tart? That's a tart lemon. Yeah. I think I got a piece of seed on me. I'm gonna cut another lemon. Anna wants lemon juice, she'll get lemon juice. I have multiple lemons over here, right for the squeezing. And things are not as shaky. I like that. It's a death lemon. That's what it is. Not just tart. Not sweet. It's 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 death. I um I know of the Meyer lemon, which I believe has a particular sweetness to it. I believe my uh, my buddy Lycos Lore is into Meyer lemons. He likes that stuff. Also, Meyer lemon makes an excellent hand soap. I found that out when I was visiting my brother. They have a um, a Meyer lemon hand soap, and it's just it's delightful. Absolutely wonderful. Lemon blood, the sanguine sweet flavor of sourness, which sounds a little opposite now that I say sweet and sour in the same sentence. <coughs> Tart. That's what it's all about. Let's move that this way. I don't know what the best way to squeeze this lemon is, aside from just doing that thing that I do. Oh, there's so many lemon oils coming out of this. Beautiful. It smells awesome over here now. All right. Maybe one day... I'll give him a lemon juicer, and then the lemons can juice themselves. Although, that's certainly not on the- that's not on the list. I need more things before that. More things like, um, oh, I don't know. A mini fridge. I need a mini fridge. People give away li mini fridges literally all the time. I don't know why I don't have another mini fridge in this apartment uh, for the cocktail stuff, because that would have been wonderful. Anyway, let's take this, put it over there on top of a pile of boxes. No, no, don't touch the glass. Do not touch that. All right. Anna, your juice is ready. Come. Coming He's coming for the juice. I the juice. I found some of the counts of swing in the six. Juice, 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 juice. I find that the juicy. Thank you You're very welcome for the juice. I'm happy to help. Hitchhiker's Guide level lemons. Lemons. I did watch the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy recently and honestly cannot remember what the point of lemons was. Wait, wait, wait. Wasn't lemons like traveling through time or whatever? Traveling through space faster than the speed of light or whatever? Why lemons. Did they do that? I don't remember, honestly. I just remember the whole um, thanks for all the fish thing when the dolphins go away because they're actually aliens from another world they entirely and they, know, and they know that the world is going to end. They fly out of the top. Speaking of the world ending. Let's put our next cocktail ingredient into the glass because the world's ending and you might as well drink. Kidding, uh, it's egg white. So here we go. We're doing this stuff again. Here's an egg. There is yolk inside of here. I don't want there to be yolk inside of my cocktail glass. And I'm hoping with a little bit of, with a little bit of rusties and a whole lot of luck that I won't yolk up my drink this time. 
Let's crack it. Cracking it. All right. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. Cameron, I added too much sugar. Did you really? Yeah, it's not sour enough. Uh oh. All right. Yolk. Don't do the yolk. I'm doing very, very lightly. No yolk. No yolk. No yolk. Oh. No yolk. Yoking. I must be yoking, she says. I was not yoking. Yes. No yolk this time. I didn't make a yolky cocktail. I'm so happy. Oh, it's great. I actually have the garbage right over here this time so I can get that get that thing out of here. I'm so happy. That That's great. Me. Oh my goodness. So help me, so help me. All right, well, now I need to figure out what to do with this, this gunky thing. You want to give it to me? Restaurant at the end of the galaxy had food animals eager to have you eat them and would just tell you so. Yo, we did it. We did it. I... I for some reason forget that. Why do we forget that? Restaurant at the end. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I'm thinking of Space Dandy where there's ramen at the end of the universe or something like that. That was a good show. All Is right. Space Dandy the one with boobies? Space Dandy has the restaurant named Boobies in Space. Yeah, that's all I remember. That's all that Anna remembers. She hyper fixates on the sexual. It something crazy me. there. Universe, not galaxy. Oh, but of course. If the yolk ever falls in, you can use a plastic bottle to suck it up. No, no, no. It actually like cracked. It was unfortunate. Like the actual, like the yolk sack just completely ruptured and was all in my drink. It honestly wasn't that bad. That was last week's cocktail, the maple leaf sour, which actually benefited a little bit from the egg yolk. I thought it tasted great. It wasn't that bad, honestly. But then again, according to many a family member and coworker, I have very odd tastes, but I'm very proud of them. So now that you have egg yolk in there, there is one final ingredient to add to this before we start doing our shake. And that is just the slightest pinch of salt. So, to apply a pinch of salt, I'm going to do thus. I'm going to take some salt, I'm going to put it on my hand. Shake it, shake it, shake it, whoop! A little bit of salt got in the drink, that's fine. A little bit of salt, there we go. Now that I have the salt upon my hand, that's the white stuff in my hand today. It's salt, not cocaine, not bodily fluid. And we just do a little pinch. Pinch. There we go. Now you've got salt and acid and proteinaceous gloop in there. And all that combined together is apparently gonna get you a cocktail that looks blue at the end. We don't put in the curacao yet, not according to the instructions. So now, let's shake this up. We're gonna do a dry shake. That means no ice, no suction keeping the two things together, just a whole lot of faith, trust, pressure on the thing so it doesn't actually spill everywhere. Um, let's try it and hopefully not make a mess. Dry shake, what do we have in here so far? We have two ounces or about 60 milliliters of tequila, three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of apricot brandy, three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of fresh lemon juice, and a single egg white and a pinch of salt. Let's, let's do it together. Very lightly, trying not to make a mess. If it was a fluid and powdered state, I'd be concerned. Yeah, that would be a little concerning, wouldn't it? I had a little bit of a spill, just a little bit. I think I like this style. It's not as nice, but, um, all right, now I can hopefully... Oh, I don't like that sound. Oh, I don't like that sound. I don't like that sound at all. It's very frothy, naturally. Now let's add some ice. I got ice. I got my cooler right down here. It's great. It's great. It's wonderful. It's cool, because coolers, get it? It's a joke. Play on words. A little bit of pun action going on here. He says stalling because he was having trouble getting the ice. One large cube. It's in there. And now uh, let's get some tiny cubes. We got a couple of tiny cubes in here. I'm a tiny cube if you consider me a regular three-dimensional quadrilateral. There we go. That actually smells amazing right now. So far, wow, that smells really good. The tequila, the tequila combined with the lemon juice the smell that I'm getting smells amazing. It's, it's delightful. I'm gonna carefully pour this over so that I don't make a mess this time. There we go. And now we're gonna... Turn it back the other way. Now let's do the wet shake, because if the dry shake is without the ice, then this must be the wet or slightly moist shake, naturally. It said shake vigorously, so this time, because the book told me to, it was a vigorous shake. All right, now I'll keep this to the side. You're making funny sounds again. Don't like that. Let me go get my yoga blocks. Yoga block. We're gonna get my cocktail glass. 
cocktail glass, which I haven't broken yet, thank goodness. Now, let's do a zoom, huh? Actually, you know what? Do I do this first, or do I make the garnish for it? Oh, we'll come back for it. That's, that's what we'll do, we'll come back to it. Where is my remote control? Where did I put my remote? Oh, there you are. My remote control's over there. I have it in places. There we go, let's zoom on in. Zoom on in, zoom on in. Uh, actually, I don't think we need two yoga blocks for this one. We're close enough to the ground where it doesn't matter. There we go. Well, actually, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think that looks fine and dandy. Fine and dandy. Let's zoom in some more. We don't need to see the bottom of the glass. We'll get a look at that later. Cocktail. Beautiful. Cocktail shaker. Beautiful. Cocktail glass. Even more beautiful. All right, so now we're going to take this. Uh, for The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a half an ounce of uh, blue curacao to this glass. So... Half an ounce or about 30 milliliters, uh, whoa, 15 milliliters of blue curacao. You can see in the back, I got Hiram Walker. Hiram Walker is the guy who's providing for us our curacao today. We need about a half an ounce of that, so thank you, Hiram. Appreciate that. That was much too much blue curacao. Can I pour some of it back? I'd like to. I'd like to. Let's only put... I put like three quarters of an ounce in there, and I didn't mean to do that, so... Oh, it's kind of pouring down the side. Eh? There we go. That's good enough. I put way too much curacao in there, and I'll try to pour the rest back in the bottle. It's a slight mess, but so are the rest of us. <laughs> I'd be lying if I wasn't a mess sometimes. All right, we got three. We've got the deep blue sea on the bottom of our glass, and now we're gonna double strain this mixture that we had previously. Uh, come on. Oh, you're very stuck on there. There we go. You were very stuck on there, weren't you? Yes, I was. That's what the glass is saying. It's speaking to me, and the glass says, drink me. Let's make it blue. Or it's already blue. Let's make it less blue proportionally than it was before. And before your very eyes, we'll see a curious combination emerge. We'll combine together like sea foam. It is very foamy. I will give it that much. It's honestly kind of cool looking. Not that bad at all. And it's pretty much perfectly proportioned for this glass. Gotta love that. Let's let that drain off a little bit. Not bad, I do, do say so myself. It's very, it's very thick. So I think there was a lot of egg white in there. That's fine. Put that back in and we'll clean that up later. The next thing that we'll need is a garnish, naturally. You gotta garnish, you gotta dress your drink. You gotta dress your drink before you drink it. So I'm going to put this off to the side real quick, and it's supposed to be garnished with an orange peel. I don't actually have any oranges. So, instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the only remaining lemon that I have, and I'm going to peel it, and I'm going to do a lemon peel. So let's do, I'm going to peel this lemon, trying as best as I can with this eh, kind of okay peeler. It's not a very good peeler, but it tries. I'm also not the best peeler myself. If I hurt myself on camera, it would not be the first time. And it was, honestly, I was really hoping to get something a little bit better than that. This was a really bad peel. Wow, this was a real bad peel. I'm gonna try that again. Try that again. Very bad peel. Very nice, very bad. Very bad peel. But that that's myself talking. All right, let's try. It's a very bad peeler. This peeler needs to be sharpened. But I don't have any sharpening apparatuses. Not in here, not in this apartment. No, I did not. All right, that's significantly better. The reason why I wanted it a little thicker like this is I wanted it to be like a little strand. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my 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 bits and put them over there. I'm gonna bring the cutting board back. And I'm just gonna kinda, I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna cut it so that it's a straight piece instead of this weird curvy thing going on here. Domstar says, to be frank, peelers are super hit or miss. Yes, they are. I have better peelers, but this was the peeler that I decided to adopt for my bar because I didn't want to take Anna's good one. All right, I'm just cutting a straight line on both sides of the peel. That way, we have a nice straight peel as opposed to one that's a little curved around the edges. Honestly, totally okay with the curves, but this time, I'm being particular. I'm being quite particular this time with my garnish. There we go. And let's cut out the other end, and we should have a nice straight piece of peel. It's as straight as that's gonna get. Honestly, for all intents and purposes, straight enough for me. And then I'm just gonna kinda 
It doesn't say to really twirl or anything like that, but there's a twirl picture in the book. So I'm just going to kind of make it a little, a little corkscrew. We'll put this back in front of the camera and zoom back in for the final garnish. Come on back in. Back into the center of the thing. Yeah, there we go. I thought it was, to be fair. You thought it was straight? You were probably right. I'm the one who's off. There we go. Put that to the side. I'll put a little... Put a little guy. Right here on the edge. It's cute. Cute little gar Cute little garnish. It's like a mermaid tail. This is the mermaid whose hand is sticky... His head is sticking out of the water. It's her blonde hair going like, Oh my goodness! I hope nobody finds me in the water! That'd be so scandalous! It's not like half of my body is out of it anyway. I wasn't- I totally wasn't just trying to get attention. Certainly not trying to become seafoam or anything, no way. It's a little fishtail! I agree. It's so pretty looking! I'm gonna take a quick Instagram photo. Yeah, you know it. It's very cute looking. I like that. That is so cute looking. I wanna kinda get this- I wanna kinda get this view from below? No, it's not really good. Put a little up close. Hi, everybody. It's my face behind the camera. In any case, looking pretty good. Mom also says it's pretty, BRB. <laughs> Very pretty. Thank you. I appreciate the compliments. I always like knowing that the drinks look good. I like even better knowing that the drink tastes good. But does it taste good? I guess we'll... I guess this is the time to find out now. Red peppers would make a good garnish for this one, too. It kind of... Red peppers. Yeah, like a red tail. Like a red-tailed fish, like salmon. It could be salmon or something. I like that. All right. Let's see how it tastes. Let me kind of wipe off the bottom of this glass. It's kind of, it's kind of sticky now. Put that away. Put this block away. There we go. We put it on the ground. The ocean mist, which is now kind of dripping on the table. It smells lovely. It smells like tequila and lemon juice, which is a great combination. I'm kind of spilling over here. Hold on one second. I am kind of spilling over here. From the first lick, tastes like tequila, tequila, and citrus. Tequila and citrus are an absolutely wonderful uh, combination. It's very, it's very margarita-like, but it's not quite margarita. Not quite margarita this time around, but it is very close. The ocean mist summarizing things up was apricot brandy, tequila, an egg white, lemon juice, and blue curacao with a pinch of salt. I'm actually curious whether or not I'll taste the salt in there. Let's see. nice there's a bit of a dryness there i'll say the first one of the actually there's something weird about that there's something totally different about that i was gonna say it tastes mostly like tequila and lemon juice it's very much like a margarita but it's got this like almost sandy taste probably because of the um the the egg yolk in there it kind of smooths things out but i i think it's maybe adding a little bit of sandiness there but come to think of it i don't think it's the egg i think what it actually is is the apricot because I've had apricots before, and I think apricots themselves are a little, they're a little tanniny. They're a little, like, um, sandpapery on the tongue. And I get that sandpaperiness. And usually I get that with egg yolk, not egg white. So I think that's where that's coming from. The apricot brandy in this cocktail, I think, is actually bringing, like, a sand, like a sandy texture to this. Which is kind of rounded. It's not completely tanniny. It's not completely dry. Because the egg yolk in there has, like, a yolk. The egg white rounds things out with a sort of smoothness and it tastes like tequila and it tastes like it tastes like margarita it's very nice i'm usually not that big on tequila but this really isn't a tequila forward taste i will say if i do this thing with my tongue i can taste a little bit of the salt there's something on the end like there's not a lot of sweetness to this however of the sweetness that is coming off from the apricot brandy and the blue curacao, it is like it's accented at the end of like the taste, kind of towards the end of the, the evolution with with a tidbit of saltiness. It's good. I really like I like I, it's not my favorite thing that I've ever made, but for a tequila drink, this is very, very pleasant. I can all I can really imagine this being like like served poolside at like a poolside bar or something on a beach. And if somebody were to tell me this tastes like this ocean or this tastes like this beach, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I kind of agree with that. I can I can pick out pieces of this that are oceany, sandy, seashelly, windy, briny. 
and it's got a cool little uh, it's got a cool little gradient to it. It's bluer on the bottom than it is on the top. And actually, come to think of it, I don't. I guess that's probably intentional because it specifically says to put the curse out into the glass and don't shake it with the rest of the drink. But I'm actually kind of curious to see what it tastes like with the curacao incorporated into the rest of the solution. So I'm actually gonna I'm gonna agitate this drink a little bit with my knife and see how that changes the flavor and see how it makes a slight mess. Put that back over there. And let's see how it tastes. A little bit different, perhaps. Oh, it's much sweeter now. It is much sweeter now. I'm getting... Actually, I, I think I like it better without the the incorporation there. I'm sure as you get to the bottom, the flavor itself would cut... The flavor of the curacao would kind of, like, leach its way into the rest of the drink. But it's a little less sandpapery. It's a tad bit more sweet. And I'm getting a flavor that... I want to say tastes like apricot, but I know it's probably the orangey taste of a blue curacao kicking in there. And uh, I'm not I'm not that huge a fan of orange liqueurs. At least, or rather, I'm not a big fan of blue curacao or curacao liqueurs. I know there are other orange liqueurs out there. Um, like, technically, Campari is a bitter orange liqueur. I like Campari. Campari's good. Um, but it's not as orange forward. This is not very orange forward. Certainly not blue curacao. But it's nice. And it's pleasant. And I like it. Would I make it again for myself? Probably not. It's a little too it's a little too acidic for me. This is probably gonna give me a little bit of the the snifflies later as we're playing Hollow Knight. But um honestly, it was a good experience. And it looks kinda pretty. And I feel like this would go perfect if you were to have like those little like gummy fish. I don't know, probably not Swedish fish, but like little gummy sharks. Or um I wonder if they sell gummy mermaids. That'll probably make our excellent garnish here. Very interesting indeed. Absolutely. And before, Dom was saying that tequila is a lime alcohol. Tequila always goes well with lime. Absolutely. And it also goes well with lemon. And lemon and lime are citrus, which would imply that perhaps it would go well with orange too, which the curacao is technically doing here. Although, kind of like, it's like orange adjacent because it's not the color. We have the peach gummies, but this is not a peach cocktail. Also, that would make this very sour. Appreciate the thought there. In any case, that's what we've got for our cocktail this evening. This for, this concludes the cocktail hour. Um, I will see y'all probably down south next week. It is going to be. I don't. I don't know how I'm going to do things. I haven't planned anything yet. Uh, but I certainly won't be in this abode here, which means that there will be no game next week. Um, so prepare you prepare yourself for that. If you're if you're a, if you're that kind of person who just really really needs that thing every week, I'm sorry. It's not going to happen this time. I'm so sorry. We gotta wait. We gotta wait a little bit, and then we'll be in the next apartment. Maybe a month from now. Dom says, "What I mean is literally made from limes." Well, tequila is not made from limes. Tequila is made from agave. Teca uh, the agave, the specifically the blue agave plant. Um, mezcals can be like any. It can be other types of agaves and places outside of a particular area. Uh, Oaxaca, which I believe it's. Oaxaca, I think it's Oaxaca is where if you make the tequila out of the blue agave. If it comes from Oaxaca, you can call it tequila. Otherwise, it's mezcal. I think, I don't know of any, I gotta, I gotta think, what is, what is, I feel like if you made a liquor from lime juice, actually, I don't know if there are any, come to think of it, I don't know of any, like, lemon-specific or lime-specific liqueurs. Come to think of it off the top of my head, I don't know of any like that. Huh. Interesting. But Dom's been lied to. Oh, you have been lied to. It is the blue agave. That's what does the tequila around here. And mezcal as well. I have a mezcal up there. It tastes nothing like tequila. It tastes more like a like a peaty whiskey. It's very, it's very pleasant. It's called um Vida. It's something Vida. I can't read it very well from here. It's dark in this apartment. It's dark back there. You can't really see anything. In any case, thank you everybody for coming to the cocktail hour. I appreciate your presence and hopefully you learned something here, thing or two. If you're into the recipes, I have been kind of behind on my Instagram posts recently, which is where I put the recipes and also in the Discord too. It's been kind of hectic with the move stuff and everything else, but uh, I'll put some things back up on there. There's also a website out there called Crafted Pour, which I also have a profile on and I also put cocktail recipes and pictures up there as well. It's kind of in its infancy, but it's kind of cool. Check it out if you want to but no pressure. I'm gonna try sleeping. Got early work tomorrow. Dom, you rest up. I know you're not sick anymore, but the body could always use more rest. Honestly, that is a very, very respectable thing. I will not be sleeping just yet. We'll go and play some games on the other side. And so if you are sticking around to the other side, I will see you then. If not, if you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day or night or evening, twilight or whatever time it may be, wherever you are, please excuse me while I go down and grab my 
Oh my god, my keyboard, because it's on the floor this time around. I will see y'all on the other side for some Hollow Knight. And if not, maybe next week. And if not at all, thanks so much for stopping in. You're cool. Stay that way. See you, everybody. Bye. Mario, ramble on your way, we're good. Ramble on your way, we're good. I don't have a gun. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bug. Bugs don't have guns. Although, maybe... Do I have projectiles? I don't have projectiles. This is fine. Hit you with my special specter move. Oh my god, you did that thing where you came down to the ground. Scary. Spooky, scary, grimace move. Does things that I'm scared of. I can stay here in the corner. And then I will not die. No, stop! Ah! Jesus.